and welcome to another cigar box guitar lesson. So I'm back on the blue one here, but we are continuing with uh, famous song riffs in relation to a few of the videos that have been posted on this channel recently. And um, thought we've looked at some basic demos and we've looked at some sort of scale uh, explanation videos, which are really useful, but let's get straight down and learn how to play some of the songs because they are all fantastic songs after all. So start with a uh, fairly sort of beginner level one. This is a good place to start. So this is Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. Uh, really good song, but quite easy to play and it works really well on three string. And uh, we're on this particular blue one because uh, this is tuned to G, D, G. So there's your G. There's your D. And there's your G. And so that allows us to play the song in exactly the same key as the original. And so what that means is, when you've learnt it, you can obviously play along with the track. So if you're interested, uh, there is a free PDF download uh, song chart available for Wish You Were Here. So that's available off the website, either above or below, so you can check that out. And also, if you're interested, you can download a scale and chord box uh, reference sheet, so really useful just for a whole bunch of different songs in relation to the, the, the various videos we've been doing recently. But let's just get straight on with learning the track. Okay, so this song uses the major pentatonic scale for the riffs, and uh, it was included in the major pentatonic sort of uh, famous riffs demo video. And we're in the key of G, so here is a very quick G major pentatonic. Open, straight to fret 2, straight to fret 4, that's on the bass string. Middle D string, open, fret 2, fret 5. Pentatonic, 5 note scale, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the octave. We can carry on if we want. Open G, fret 2, fret 4, fret 7, fret 9 to the octave but you can you can check out the um, sort of scale explanation video for the major pentatonic scale if you want to have a look at that in more detail so straight on to the intro and uh, it's basically based around two chords so uh, there's riffs going into the chords but there's a an E minor and an open G so the E minor will definitely be the trickiest one and it involves just bridging round a little bit so that you try not to catch strings underneath. And we're on fret four of the bass string and we're on fret two of the uh, middle string and then we've got an open uh, high G. So it goes something like that. And then you've got G next. Uh, and then in the second half, we've got, so if I was to just bar fret two, that would be an A. You gotta watch the action of your strings, by the way. This, this one's a little bit brutal for chords. It's good for slide at the minute. But that would be a straight A. But I, I want an A7, so I'm just gonna hold down the two bass strings and let the high G ring out again. Okay, so there's just three three chords in, in the intro, that's it. E minor, we'll have open strings for G, and then there's the A7, okay? So how do the riffs go? Well, right at the beginning, we've got low G. I'm gonna do a hammer on. So that is fretting fret two, and I'm tapping on quickly so that I keep the sound without deadening it onto fret four. And then as soon as I've done that, I'm gonna to go to open B in the middle, and then I'm gonna to go to fret two, and then I'm gonna to go to fret four, and then strum the chord, because I've basically just added those chord notes one at a time open, hammer on, open, B, fret 2, fret 4, 
strum. Now, Dave Gilmore from Pink Floyd, pretty good guitarist, you know, uh, great, great take in the studio, nice sort of loose feel, and uh, the way he's strumming, uh, you know, it works really well for somebody who so it's kind of feels quite improvised, sounds a little bit improvised, you know, with the rhythms and stuff. So if we want to uh, be able to play it at a more beginner level, it's good to keep the rhythm the same all the way through. It sounds very, very much like the song, but it's ever so slightly different to what's done on the original recording. Now I, I do this on like normal guitar as well and I nearly always play it this way with people and it, it, it works really well. So what we're going to do when, when we're on this chord is uh, we're going to use this strumming, we're going to go down, down, up, up, down, okay. So you've got down, down, up, miss, up, down. So it just gives you a nice little offbeat sound in the middle. Down, down, up, up, down. Now remember with um, strumming you can be nice and loose but when you're picking strings sometimes it's good to have a reference either like resting underneath uh, or kind of resting on the bridge. So I'm, I'm sometimes sort of jumping between hand positions. So here's the, the riff hammer on and then a bit bit looser with my hand position all right and then going into the G I'm gonna hold that chord and I'm gonna play the first two notes I'm gonna play the the high G and then that fret 2 which is already on the chord and then there's the open D and then we've got an open G. So from the E minor chord, I've got high G, middle fret two, and then open D, open G. Let's just use the same, same rhythm. And let's also check it from a different angle. So here is the riff going in uh, right at the beginning. So it's open, hammer on, open middle string, fret two, fret four. There's the chord, I've just formed it, strum it, down, down, up, up, down, open high, fret two, which is already on for the chord, open D, open G. it. Okay. Uh, where, whereabouts is the beat? There. Well, <clears throat> it goes one, two, three, and four, and one. So beat one is actually when we land on the first note of the chord, of the E minor chord. So we're going to come in with that pickup with the start of the riff in between beats three and four. So it's like one, two, three, and four, and one, and strum. Going into the next bit, we still go to E minor in exactly the same way. So this is great, we already know this. But then this time, we're going to just do a slightly different riff to get into the A7 chord, which goes open D, and then it's uh, fret four, sorry. 
on the, the bass string and then it goes to fret two. And when I go to fret two, that is the first note of the A chord. So I need to use sort of like fret with the tip of my finger so I can just keep it on, I don't have to take it off and reposition it. So we, we, we go from the um, E minor, we then go open D, fret four on the bass, fret two, and then fret two. So, so we, we eventually again play each of those notes from the chord one at a time, keep them on. There's the chord, the A7 chord, same strumming. So sort of like the, the second half of the intro, we've, we're going into the E minor in exactly the same way. And then open D, fret four, and then a couple of fret two notes. Strum the A7 chord. Back to the E minor, because we repeat all of that. Same, open, four, there's your A chord. And then we go Then we go into a G, so we still do the hammer on riff, but we go straight into a G chord. So after we finish strumming the A, hammer on, and then just play an open G, and a D again. So when we get to the G chord, um, the first time round, we're, we're, we're going to play it for two bars and then we're going to go back and do it all again. And that's when the um, guitar solo, the second guitar comes in over the top. We do all of that, but a second guitar comes in and plays a solo. So when we are just strumming the G, um, one, two, Three, four, and a one, two, three, and. And then that's taking me right back to the top, and the um, lead guitar's come in at that point over the top. So right back to an E minor, right back to the beginning of the cycle. So let me just play the entire cycle, and you can hear how it goes. to E minor, hammer to G, two, three, four, one, two, three, and we're off again. Okay, that's the hardest part which is great, so hopefully that's not that difficult. Um, when, when we're on the G, we can completely just strum the open, or if you, you want to make it sound a bit more interesting, you could always uh, go for fret four. That is also a G, so that's a G power chord, which works fantastically well, but you can even go for that one. And you can even go for fr uh, fret five on the middle as well. If you, you know, see, see, see what you like, so. mix it up but what happens is at the end of the second time round where it's the solo 
We do it all exactly the same again, but we only play that G for one bar instead of the two when we repeat it the first time, and then we're straight into the verse. Okay, now I'll show you the easiest way to play the verse to start with. C, which is just fret five. Uh, we'll just do power chords to start with, and then it goes up to fret seven for D. These are all bars, so again, if you need any help with barring, check out one of the earlier videos. So you can either look at, uh, what did we have, 20th Century Boy by T-Rex or uh, Sunshine You Love, which helped with basic picking and barring. Then down to fret two, which is an A, and then open G. So the verse starts with C, fret five, D, fret two, open, G, C, D, A, G. And then it's exactly the same, but this time we go to D first, fret seven, then we go to fret five, and then we go to fret two, and then we go to, and here we, we can make the strumming just a little bit different. We could maybe go like, so, so these are chords, so we're strumming them all. We're not doing any picking here. We could maybe go one, two, three, four. Sorry, it's one and two and three and four and, all right. So two downs and then alternate. And you do that rhythm twice and that gives you exactly one bar because it's quite a slow speed and to make it more interesting uh, you can keep that going but you can you know maybe hit the odd single string make the odd one a bit louder just so it's got a bit more life to it so it's not too sort of flat all the way through That's the kind of easiest version if you can do basic barring, but let's try it with some different chords. So this C gets used a lot. That shape's quite difficult though, because you're on fret two, you're on fret five. A lot of people find that tough, bending round and stretching. So you're not flat, and blocking off loads of strings particularly this pinky finger needs to be bending round. But it's basically fret five, fret two, open G. That's your C. Let's go for this D down here. So it's the power chord shape, fret two, fret two, open D in the middle. And then let's go for, uh, instead of just a straight A, bar let's try and get up to fret five as well with the pinky finger and that is now an a minor and then because we're making that sound like a minor not just a straight power chord let's go for something a little bit sweeter sounding on the g so i'm going to go for fret two and fret four so i've got c d power chord a minor, G. And then the second time round, we go to the D power chord first, then the C, and then the A minor, and then the G. Let's try that from a different angle. So with these, what you'd class as like open chords, because we've got some open strings, you've got to make sure that you're quite flat, um, sort of bridged round. So there's the C. There's the D, D5. There's the A minor, quite low down there. And then there's the G. And then you just go the D to the C. 
to the A minor and G the second time. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go round the last time of the intro, going straight into the first verse. Uh, incidentally, the verse is exactly the same as the chorus. It's just it sounds more like a chorus because he sings Wish You Were Here later on in the song. So there's only two, two elements to it in total, but I'm going to go straight into the verse chords. And so if you hear how there's only one bar of G before it goes to the verse. So the guitar solo at this point. minor again, different to A. Repeat that. Down to A again. Into G, 3, 4, C. D first now, isn't it? C and the D rounds for the second half of the verse. There's your A minor. Finish on G. Do it all again for verse 2. Alright, so I hope that was useful. So, uh, like I was saying, that is uh, the, the two main sort of component parts of the song. So the intro and the chords for the verse and the chorus, but um, I've not actually explained exactly how the structure works. So like I was saying at the beginning, uh, please go and download the completely free uh, PDF song chart if you, if you want to be able to play along with the track. You know, once you can get it up to speed, it's really good fun to play along with like original recordings. And so really good opportunity here because we are in the correct key. So that's it. I hope uh, that's fun to learn, fun to play, and uh, we'll be back here very soon with some more uh, famous song, famous riff tutorials. So we'll see you here again soon on Coda Guitar.